Well, first of all, the United States under the Biden administration is against a ceasefire at this point of time. Um, and the uh, Israeli government is being backed up on this position until all of the 240 hostages are released. Those 240 hostages include over 30 children, Holocaust survivors, uh, many uh, injured. There has been no uh, proof of life that is given. And basically in the United States, and it is bipartisan across the political, accept, uh, political spectrum, is that a ceasefire at this time would be a victory for Hamas. And Hamas needs to be thought of by your viewers as no different, in fact, maybe worse than Daesh, than ISIS, of the things that they did with beheadings, with cutting uh, open um, pregnant women's bellies, cutting children's arms off, killing children in front of their parents. Israel cannot live with a terrorist entity on their doorstep. And America needs a strong Israel for its national security interests. So European countries uh, and the United States, what is being discussed now are humanitarian pauses to allow um, uh, food and medicines to come in. There really is not a shortage. A lot of this is more propaganda than not. Um, the, according to international law, um, what Hamas is doing uh, using their citizens as, as human shields um, and stealing the people's uh, fuel and oil and, and everything else. According to international law, Israel is required to allow food, water, and medicine. It is not according to international law, certainly not according to my government's Department of Defense rules of law. It is not obligated to send in fuel. There is plenty of fuel for hospitals, but it is being hoarded by Hamas. Um, Hamas will use any additional fuel for its rockets and for its underground ventilation system. Just like the United States needed to, and Iraq needed to destroy ISIS, and I've been to your country and I've met with the Yazidis as one group that was uh, terribly affected by it, Israel needs to destroy Hamas politically and militarily um, in order for Israel to be perceived as strong after this war. The question is, how long will the international patience go on? Because Hamas's currency is to use its civilians as a, a, and to increase their the number of civilians that are injured to put pressure on Israel. They don't care anything about their civilians. To be pro-Palestinian is to be anti-Hamas, and not enough people realize that difference. So Israel has had, before this war, more and more success with talking with Muslim Arab countries. Um, and that was one of the reasons Iran initiated this war, to was destroy the Israeli-Saudi normalization. Israel, for a short period of time, will need to occupy and control Gaza. It would like to hand it over to Egypt, to Arab countries, um, to bring in European countries, the United States, 
um, to act as an administrator there. The problem is that Egypt does not want to be involved. Why? Because Hamas is really part of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is a threat to Egypt because Egypt could easily do what other countries have done when there's been refugees to put them temporarily in places in the Sinai, but they refuse to do that. Most Arab countries have not been very sympathetic over the years to the Palestinians because they thought that they have not been, uh, they have been stealing so much of the monies that they have been given. So uh, they're not anxious to be there. The Europeans have enough on their plate with Ukraine. And so none of these countries really want to do that. They all speak a good game, but what they really need to do if they really are pro-Palestinian is, is at the end of this, is to bring the money and to bring order, rule of law um, there, and let the Israelis leave. The Israelis have no interest in being a Gaza. They do not want to rule over two million people who don't like them. So America's position in the Middle East over the last few years has not been, not been good because um, when America left Iraq in 2011, when it left Afghanistan, when President Obama, President Obama didn't enforce his red line on chemical weapons in Syria, when Saudi Arabia was attacked and um, there was no response, um, all of that said to the, to the Middle East, America is leaving. And so the bad players, especially Iran and its prox proxies, have filled that vacuum. At this point of time, we don't know how America will be perceived at the end of this war. If America needs to or is asked to help Israel, if the North I hope not, but it's certainly possible. The problem of the Middle East is Iran. Iran is a revolutionary theocracy. It threatens Iraq. It threatens Kurdistan. It threatens Israel. It really threatens Europe. But the Iranian people, they would like to be free of that regime, which to America is the world's leading state sponsor of terror. What, would, what could happen here and what should happen here is that everybody needs to realize that this war and so much of the dangers of the Middle East are all because of Iran. And if the lesson that's learned from this war is that Iran is the primary problem and sanctions are enforced, it will be a better place and less chance for a regional show. If Iran, at the end of this, thinks that it and its proxies are stronger, it will threaten Kurdistan, it will threaten Iraq, it will threaten Saudi Arabia, it will threaten Israel. And that is the biggest danger. The concentration here from this war, when you look at it on a larger scale, it's all about Iran. My pleasure.